here with Design Therapy. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad to have you on today. What I'm gonna be showing you today is we're gonna be doing some DIY and we're going to be DIYing some ornaments for the holidays. There's been a lot of new ornaments, velvet out there, a little bit more of that rustic, well-worn items that are really in and on trend this year for the holiday season. Sometimes they can be hard to find just because they are so new and everyone is picking them up. So what I thought we would do is we would use some items that maybe we already have or some items that we can go ahead and get at Dollar Tree or some store that's pretty cheap like Walmart and then we can go ahead and DIY it and create that look for less. So let's go ahead, I'll show you step-by-steps and hopefully you craft alongside me and you enjoy this video. Let's go crafting. My color scheme this year for Christmas is tan, greens, and black, using that as an accent color. So I'll be designing the ornaments to fit that scheme. For the first ornament, I'll be using dried flowers I found from Goodwill a few years ago. You can find a similar type at Hobby Lobby, so I'll link the, a similar type below in the description box. I first simply cut the stems to fit into the ornament snugly. You wanna make sure that the stems are not too long, but obviously not too short as well. You can situate them by turning the ornament around or using a paintbrush or a pen to make it look pretty from all angles. Next, I wanted to paint the ornament caps gold, so I used a rub and buff to add the right amount of vintage flair. You could also use spray paint and paint them gold or whatever color you wish, and that could be a quicker solution, but I wanted to use the rub and buff. I then let them dry until I was ready to use them at the end. I used paint that I had on hand, my favorite khaki color, black, and then some other neutral colors for a variety of shades. I've been admiring these lovely crate and barrel Christmas ornaments this year, but they weren't in my budget for the, for the year overall. I knew that I could probably make something very similar. So using the color khaki, I'll give the ornaments a really good first coat, set it aside dry, and then overall probably painted around three to four layers of paint on the ornaments. And a really good tip is to apply a thin coat and then apply multiple colors for a better application. To add some texture, I used baking soda and added it to the white and brown paint and began dabbing it all over the ornament. I had fun with this step and it's it's really nice because it's very forgiving and if you apply too much of one color you can dab some water on it then apply a lighter coat color over that to make it the look that you want. You can keep building until you really get that desired look. Fortunately this was one of my least favorite looks but it really does make it look clay like and have that texture and give it that look alike. It just wasn't my favorite. Next, I'm going to play with the green. I used Arbor Green paint color from Walmart, and then I just applied a full first coat. it was dried I used rub and buff again to add a vintage touch and this is where it will start to take that shape of the crate and barrel design after playing around with it I really did find that if you use less paint on the sponge or your brush whatever you're using the nicer the look will resemble resemble the crate and barrel look On the black paint, I used a similar approach as the green one to make them semi-match with their designs overall. However, after I let that black one dry, I didn't like it as much as I thought, so I added white to the black paint to make it a charcoal color, and then I painted over most of the black. After that was dry, I lightly brushed over with Rub and Buff. My brush was almost dry when I did that, and I think that was key because it almost felt like I was doing a dry brush over the ornament and it gave it 
just the right amount rub and buff without getting it too clunky. That was probably my favorite technique looking back. The caps were dry and ready to be pl placed on top. My last step was a ribbon, so I picked up these three colors from Hobby Lobby that had different textures from each other and fit into my color scheme as well. I'll link the ribbons in the description box below. The last design is inspired by the R House Green Velvet Ornaments. After seeing the price for those this year, I was determined to make one that was a little cheaper than that. So I discovered these sparkly ornaments at Dollar Tree. If you paint them using a matte paint, it can truly resemble that velvet material after they are dry. But you have to be careful with this process. You have to trust it um, because if you look at it right away before it's dry, you'll think that it's not working. But once it's dry, it really does resemble that velvety material. And you probably will have to do around three to four coats to get the best look. And the darker paint color, the better it will turn out. I was really shocked to see how similar they resembled velvet. And it really made me want to complete more ornaments and complete this design over and over again for another project as well. After the caps were dried, as well as the ornaments, it was time to compile them all together. I used the gold ribbon for these little ones. I liked the gold best against that green texture. However, they were too thick, so I ended up cutting them to make the width smaller so that they would fit in the top of the ornament, and then I could get the look I was, I was going for. So that's a tip you can simply just cut them. Obviously it raveled a little bit, but I just cut those strings off and it worked just fine. And there you have it. I had a lot of fun with this DIY and I'm so happy how it turned out. Let me know in the comments below what you think. All right, that about wraps up today's video. I really hope you enjoyed DIYing and crafting alongside me. If you did, you wanna go ahead and like and subscribe. That would really help my channel. And if you wanna go ahead and comment on what was your favorite ornament and also if you did decide to complete some of these crafting as well for yourself and your family. This really did bring me back to elementary school, my mom used to do something really special for us each year. She would either make an ornament or she would buy an ornament and then she would give it to us each year so that we have 18 plus ornaments that when we went on our own, we had a whole box of ornaments instead of just trying to cultivate and collect our own. So it was really special that she did that and this just really brought me back to that. I remember helping her do a little bit of crafts on the kitchen table and so this was really special for me and I hope that this is something that maybe you can bring into your family as well and let my mom inspire you. Again, I don't want you to miss any of the upcoming videos that I have. So if you want to like and subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. Talk to you later. See you later. Bye.